One of the last things that I need to get done for the underground chicken coop is a nesting box. We have an old vintage nesting box in the old chicken coop, but I decided I wanted to build one from scratch from some of the leftover 1x12s. Typically, for every one nesting box, you would have three to four birds. Initially, I started out to build a 15 pocket nesting box, and as I progressed, I figured out that 10 would be more than sufficient. At the moment we have 23 laying hens and two roosters and we're averaging about seven to eight eggs a day. But as it's progressively getting warmer, we're getting more eggs. And if I have things my way, we will rotate out the laying hens every year, meaning we will take that year's layers, put them up for sale. So we're constantly keeping young stock in the mix. And if we do this right, there may be an opportunity for the kids to make a little bit of money along the way. Because in our area, a one-year-old laying hen can be worth as much as $25 to $30 a piece. The problem with my plan is my lovely wife, Cedar, has never met a chicken that she doesn't like. So it's kind of hard for her to get rid of some of the older hens that aren't laying quite as much. In a best case scenario, a laying hen is going to start laying somewhere around six months and we've had hens lay for over five years, but they typically get a little bit inconsistent the older they get. Last fall, we picked up an incubator that we will use to cycle in the new chicks. And again, the hope is that we're constantly cycling in healthy laying hens and then we can sell off the second year birds to help offset some of the costs associated with the chickens. By the way, this will probably never happen, but I think it'd be a great idea if my wife and kids weren't so attached to the chickens. But having about 20 to 30 laying hens provides us with more than enough eggs for our needs, but it also provides us with enough eggs that we can sell locally to offset the costs of the feed for the chickens. But the long-term goal is to have a very, very large compost pile right near the new chicken coop in that front pasture area where I can constantly be turning straw and grass and goat manure and chicken manure into compost that we can use in our gardens. And the idea is that by having a very large natural organic compost pile, the chickens will be more than happy without the layer mix and the scratch grains. And by the way, the compost pile is much more natural and healthy for those chickens than the grains ever would be.
there will be much more protein available in the compost pile than they would get in the scratch grains, so the eggs will taste better. This is about the moment where I realized that the new nesting box might be a little bit too big and that the lower five pockets in the nesting box I can take off and we would still have 10 pockets which will be more than enough. I was kind of bummed and it was a little bit of a waste of material but the nesting box didn't look quite right and it was just a little bit too big. While I'm trying to get the absolute most out of that little chicken coop that I can, I do not want to put too many chickens in there. So having 10 pockets in the nesting box is really all we need. On the lower part of the new nesting box, I need to build a perch that the chickens will use to roost on when they're not using the nesting box. And the idea is, I need to put the lower roost further away from the front of the nesting box and the upper roost closer to the front of the nesting box so that when the chickens stand on the roosts, they're not in danger of being lined up, if you know what I mean. Not very far from our place here is one of the largest chicken farms on this half of the country. And if we didn't want to mess with chickens, we could drive down to that processing plant and get their scratch and dent eggs for virtually nothing, like pennies. The problem is I'm not crazy about the way those chickens were raised, 
and I'm not crazy about the feed that those chickens are eating. The bottom line is it is a factory farm producing as many eggs as it possibly can. And there's absolutely no reason why I can't take on the responsibility of raising those chickens myself and ultimately ending up with a higher quality product and spending just enough extra time to get the new nesting box just cute enough is definitely part of the process. Chickens can jump pretty high. As a matter of fact, they can jump very high if they want to. But we've also had laying hens that didn't like to jump any more than about 12 to 15 inches. So I'm trying to mount the new nesting box in a way where it's easily accessible for any of the hens that want to get up there. To the left of the new nesting box, I'm also going to build even more roosts to give all of the chickens a place where they can feel safe.
One of the things you have to remember when you're working with rough sun lumber, especially as it starts to dry out, is the potential to get a sliver. I've worked with the wood long enough that it doesn't get to me too often, but I deliberately sanded down every pokey on the new nesting box, so when one of the kids or when cedar may be collecting eggs, they're not taking their life in their own hands. Lightly hitting the nesting box with my band sander was really all that it needed. Sir. 